All right, you are still watching Ways Now. Motivation and Inspiration Day celebrated on January 2nd is a day to ignite your inner spark, push past limits, and turn your dreams into reality. It's about finding the inspiration to kickstart your year or the New Year's resolutions that you've made and make progress towards your goals. Fantastic day. <laughs> very Really, active. very fantastic day. <laughs> I mean, it probably should be my birthday. Right? Yeah. And it's my birth month anyway, so... So you're a January baby? Yes, I am. When is your month? When is your day, sorry? 29. Oh, nice. Yeah. Nice, nice. Excited. I like the fact that... Um, so, do you know, it was just... It just dawned on me when I was going through different churches and their, they call them declarations for the year. Yeah. It just dawned on me that some of the principles that I've learned over the years, you mm. know, when it comes to human psychology and how your words, you know, impact your life. I mean, the Bible says it clearly that the power of life and death lies in the in tongue, tongue, right? But again, it didn't just occur to me that some of these principles that churches practice, they're actually um, like natural principles that would eventually make you or mar you. It, yeah. it depends on how you approach it. So yeah. for instance, a church is declaring that this is your year to blossom, right? Mm. Imagine you waking, you waking up every, up every morning say that. and affirming that and yes. saying that I will blossom yeah. in 2024 yeah. or I would make good fortune in 2024 mm -hmm. or whatever it is the pro um, proclamations, proclamations are. Yeah. You know, so these inspirations and motivations, right, they are Hell. not there for you to just keep it on one shelf. It's actually there for you to speak them into reality. So for anybody that, like, like I said, I mean, or as I said earlier, I'm not really, I didn't, I didn't really pay attention to writing anything down mm -hmm. because last year was a lot of planting. I was telling my friend, we did a lot of first. We did a lot of planting. We did a lot of, you know, setting up. I was setting up the office, setting up a lot of things. And also this is the year to actually so start to, yeah. yeah so, I mean, habits. so imagine if you are very resolute to say, you know what, every morning I wake up and I say, Uwa, this is your year to blossom. What are the steps I'm taking to ensure that that blossoming happens, right? Those are the kinds of practicality yeah. that I am approaching 2024 with. So yeah. I suppose just, you know, aspire to perspire. This is not about it. It's about mm. you actually speaking what you want into your reality. And I mm. think it will happen if you, if you have faith in it. Yeah, most definitely. Um, I think most importantly, I want to build a habit of my affirmations. And so for that to happen, it means I need to be clear on what I want. It's not, and I've, I've also come to understand that if what I want is big, I need to believe in it because um, I don't care how other people see it, but if that's what you want, you need to believe in it. And if I'm able, you know, to do those affirmations, it would definitely happen. Mm -hmm. And, you know, because this year I want to be direct that this is what I want and this is how I want it to, to happen. I'm not saying God is going to do it immediately or, you know, 20 years after. But then that clarity of sitting down with myself to say, okay, you want to move to the next step. You're sure you want to move to the next step. So I'm ready to move to the next step. Mm -hmm. And give me the grace to go to the next step. Absolutely. You know, so uh, and just to add to what you've important. said, right, when they, when they say write the vision, make it plain, right, when you spoke on, on clarity. Yes. Because the, the key factors to success is mm -hmm. clarity. Mm -hmm. Once you can clearly uh, have and a vision, clear picture. Yes, of what you, you see, want. That reality, it is just a matter of time. It yes. will come to reality. But yeah. the clarity first must happen in your yes. mind. You must really yes. see clearly that mm -hmm. this is where I'm going. Not today, you're yes. wavering this murky, way. Yeah. You know, tomorrow, you're yeah. like, mm, I don't, mm. In case this one doesn't happen, mm. there's no in case. This, this is, is what, what I want, want yeah. and I don't know how I'm going to get absolutely. it, but God is going to get it for me. Absolutely, so, yeah, that's, absolutely. That's what is important. All right, so what did you find for us in today's news? Okay, <laughs> today we have the Interior Minister, Dr. Olubumi Tunji Ojo, has said that it's a stupid practice in court, to subject married women to the rigorous travel, traveling to the Nigeria Immigration Service headquarters in Abuja just to effect a data change. Ojo, who said this at a dinner with members of the Asiwaju Bola Ahmed Tenubu Media Center and some social media influencers in Abuja, asked if the immigration personnel in Abuja has more than one head as opposed to those in the various passport offices across the Federation. He said, in court, there's one stupid thing I have seen, and it is that a woman gets married, changes her name, and then she has to come to Abuja all the way to stay from 
Quara or Enugu just to come and effect a change of name in password. It is absurd. You know, Fair. <laughs> what's your thoughts on it? Um, I think it's actually ridiculous because considering the flight ticket to Abuja now is almost <laughs> like a... Um, and I'm an I mean, you know, I was just going to say that <laughs> I think for the interior minister, I completely share his sentiments. <laughs> and this is what I'm saying that, you know, when some of these things used to happen in the past, we didn't have technology. Yeah. We didn't have a lot of, like, we didn't have access to a lot of things that we have today. There's technology. There are so many sophisticated, um, what's it called, database uh, systems, right, that they are using today that they didn't have 10 years ago when these things were reality, right? where people had to travel all the way to go and get their passports done and all of that. So why in God's name in this century where we have access to so multiple sophisticated technology, we're still having to subject ourselves to this? And I want to add to the interior minister to say that it should not just stop at women changing their names. Children. Any change of any name. Change, I have to go to yes, a for, for any mine. Any change, right? <laughs> if you, okay, like my son now, for instance, right? His name is Alpha Esosa Sally. Yeah. When we did his first passport, it was just Alpha Sally. Oh, right? that happened. That happened. That so, exact same thing. So happened because to me. all his credentials in school, <laughs> now his wired results name. and everything had the middle name, we had to take him all. The, do you know how much we spent? We paid three times into the immigration services because yes, we had to take him back to Abuja. Right? Don't forget the cost that it came to. We had to take him to Abuja for them to add the middle name. The same thing with driver's license. If you want to change your so. Like, literally, right, some of these things happened because we didn't have technology. Now that we have technology, some of these things really need to be scrapped. So I 100% agree with the interior minister that it is actually absurd. It's actually right? absurd. They need, to, they need yeah. to revamp some of these things. They don't serve us. They don't. You can't leave me. I'll leave Lagos. I'll go all the way to Abuja just to go and get Do something you know done. Flight if there is a here. small error in your name, I have to take myself and fly all the way to Abuja to get it done. Pay for hotel. No, it doesn't make any sense. Stay there. So I, t I completely agree with him. Yeah. All right, so in light with the federal government, I mean, this is the year of government, government, government. <laughs> Even Mary wants to run away, but well, we will catch you. <laughs> the federal government suspends accredi um, accreditation of degree certificates from Benin Republic and Togo. Mm. So now, this is it. The federal government has suspended the accreditation and evaluation of degree certificates from Benin Republic and Togo. This move followed a report by Daily Nigerian detailing how a degree was acquired from a university in Benin Republic. The report published on the 30th of December in 2023 exposed how corrupt government officials and the fraudulent businessmen, um, uh, and, and, and government officials rather, aid the fraudulent business of certificate racketeering. Now, the report also exposed how Daily Nigerian reporter Umar Aldo finished <laughs> Imagine the four-year degree program in less than two months from, <laughs> they oh. call the name of the school, Ecole Supreme de Gestion et de Technologie in Cotonou, Benin Republic. He obtained his certificate without applying. There was no application. There was no registration. There was no studying. There was no exam writing. Although the reporter never crossed any Nigerian borders, an immigration officer was able to get his passport, the hill, stamped, by both Nigeria and Beninois immigration agents to enable him participate in the National Youth Service Corps. Now, the report lends uh, credence to the suspicions that some Nigerians deploy nefarious means and on, on whatever methods to, to get a degree with the end, of, um, the end objective of getting graduate job opportunities for which they are not qualified. Now, the spokesperson for the Minister of Education um, Augustina Obialoduru said in a statement that was released today uh, that the federal government, uh, the federal ministry of <coughs> education, vehemently decries such acts, and with effect from today, they are suspending evaluation and accreditation of degree certificates from Benin Republic pending the outcome of an investigation that would involve the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Nigeria and two countries, and of course the two countries, the ministries. Uh, responsible for education in the two countries, as well as the Department for State um, Security Services, that's DSS, and the National Youth Corps um, Service. So this is interesting. When I saw this, I said, yes. She said, we'll put in a sad. No, but you see, they, the thing they are failing to realize with this story, that you are not just indicting the Ministry of Education 
or um, what's it called, the people that uh, accredit the, uh, what's it called, the certificate. You are indicting your immigration services, which means yeah. that the, your borders are porous because they said that these things Guys, are being stamped. stamped. So how did the person stamp a um, entry and exit without even leaving the shores of Nigeria? So it is not just, and I say this all the time, for corruption to happen, it is not one agency. It is a, it is a what's called a syndication yeah. of several agencies that makes it happen. So I am excited about this because again, this is why no, I am excited. I'm excited that they are they are, they are acknowledging the fact that we have a problem, and this is why first of all, too, a lot of things must be scrapped. We should stop laying too much emphasis on certificates, right? For education, we should stop laying too much mm -hmm. emphasis on certificates. You know why? If you are laying a lot of emphasis on certificates, people will do anything to get a certificate. That's why people pay lecturers. They bribe lecturers to be able to pass their um, um, exams. You say, okay, you must graduate with a 2 one. No worry. They go and give a lecturer money. They will give them a 2 one. Do you understand? But the person mm -hmm. comes out, the person does, cannot even spell their names, not to even talk about you know, writing an exam. So the bribery continues all the way. Then the Ministry of um, the Youth Service Corps, it's not ma I, I don't think... It is fair to mandate people that they must go for youth service. I don't think it's fair, right? Because it is all of these, all these conditions mm. that is birthing some of these corruptions that we're seeing. So a lot of things have to be changed. A lot of things must be tweaked. But what would we have in place um, if, if not that? Which what, of them? What, like how, so how would you choose to employ people? You're not going to... You don't have to choose... I mean, okay, let me explain how <coughs> employment happens abroad. Right from the school, right? Mm -hmm. Employers go to the school. I was having a conversation with a friend of mine, and he said that, see, there are some courses that you study right now, anywhere in the world, that whilst you are there, your lecturers are already writing to all the potential employers to say, come, there's a chap here, right? Most of the schools in the UK, most of the schools abroad, they actually, they actually handpick they are so the, those, they those, employed that would be from A star students. No, it's not even about A star. It's not even about A star. Do you understand? It's not about it because even if they come to your school, recruiters come to your school, right? They can't what recruit are you, everybody. No, no, they can't recruit everybody. But whether you are A star or not, yeah. right? If you, if there's an opportunity for those recruiters to have direct access to you, I am sure they will evaluate you and they will tell you what they want. It's not every recruiter that is looking for an A star student. Some recruiters are just looking for people that are street smart. Right? It's not about your grade. And this is why I'm saying that we should, we should reduce the emphasis on certificates. Because some people do not have certificates, but what they can do, they qualify bigger and better than what even people with certificates cannot, well, um, can, still, can I, do. I, I, still, I, I, do, I don't see no, how but they I just feel like to focus there on needs to be a, an overhaul in that. That's yes, the point yes, I'm trying to make. Most, most definitely. And so it is not just indicting, they saying that they are suspending uh, uh, accreditation or certificate. They should also they should also go and investigate immigration in, in immigration and our yeah. border, you know. So, so. But I, I like this story. I'm, I'm loving the way 2024 is know, going. I'm, because just, I'm just scared because I have a friend who just finished from Kotonu and literally, like... No, um, but that's why they said they would investigate. She's yeah, the friend. You saw the friend go to school. In the process of the investigation now, Everybody's she's, she's going to be at home. Oh, shoot. She's going to be at home. Oh, shoot, shoot. Because it's with immediate effect. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. Ah. And, I, like, I know what it took her to, yeah. you know, go through that because she was at mine before oh. and then she left. I and then think about that one or two. Yeah, yeah. so it's, there's going to be a lot of waiting at home. Mm. Now, it's not like you can go for NYSE. She's stranded. Yes. In the meantime, she's stranded. So, it's, so it's, it's also tough. the onus is on the schools as well to come out and speak up, right? Because at least this school was particularly mentioned. So those other schools, I don't think it is all the schools that are fraudulent, right? So the schools need to speak up. They need to also write to the education ministry in Nigeria to say, you know, they're they're foreign <coughs> students. I I, I mean, I, I guess that there will be a body. I mean, because this is a school. blanket. Yes. Um, um, hammer that and has been, already, that is eating I think everybody. They already have some sort of um, things for Nigerian students, even these Kotonu schools. I don't know what it was, but I know she was telling me something like that. You know, how sometimes they're being. Discrimination. Yes, sort know, of. Know. You know, so I mean, I, do, I hope the schools would want to or be able to fight for Help them. them. Yeah, mm. because it seems like they're just going to leave them alone. As well. Let's see how it goes. Ah, that's sad. I didn't think about those other people, Sha. But <laughs> yeah. they'll be fine. They'll be fine. But I, I think to help these people, let the school write. 
yeah. let the school write to, to, the, to, to the, the education ministry. And then you then defend your degree to say, this is our own degree. Or they get it by doing the actual work. Fair. Okay, so we'll take a break now. When we come back from the break, let us discuss our governor. <laughs> Stay with us, we'll be right back.